The year is 1811. A secret band of rebel extremists who follow a Robin Hood-like figure are terrorizing the English countryside. Guards and soldiers battle an all-out war. At the peak of the violence, the English army deployed several thousand troops just to round up these rebels. And dozens were hanged and exiled. What is this, the latest video game? No, it actually took place in history. The rebel group were a group of men fighting over, you'll never guess, weaving. The Luddites, as they were known, disliked the mechanical loom, and they feared that the unskilled machine operators were robbing them of their livelihood. Today, Luddite is a term used to describe someone who dislikes new technology. Many parents may argue that the opposite of a Luddite is someone who relies on or uses too much technology. These people may be known by the term as gamer, but I call them kids. <laughs> Today, a controversy as intense as the battle between the Luddites and the factories are being waged between those who think that video games will create superhumans capable of astounding feats, and those that think gaming will bring on the next apocalypse. I've heard people ask, how much time is too much time? Should children be allowed to play video games at all? Are some video games pure evil? The research is contradictory and random. In the popular book and movie, Ready Player One, the world is a dystopian one because society now revolves around a virtual reality world where video games decide your fate. Maybe this is what the modern day video game Luddites fear. A world where all the skills they've acquired over lifetimes are useless and the gaming skills they have devalued are the new currency. Research is full of other concerns as well. Some emotional symptoms of electronic addiction are defensiveness, mood swings, and boredom with routine tasks. Some people, however, may call this adolescence. <laughs> people worry that playing video games for a long period of time will have a negative effect on the body. They envision pale-skinned kids sitting in the blue light of a screen with hunched backs drool oozing from their zombie-like mouths while guzzling Mountain Dew in their mother's basement. Research shows that playing video games can damage your brain, specifically the hippocampus part of the brain. This is because playing shooter games requires excessive use of another part of the brain, the caudate nucleus. The caudate nucleus grows and grows, while the hippocampus part of the brain shrinks and shrinks. This can cause both depression and Alzheimer's. You guys should consider this though. A pilot sits in the cockpit of a brand new plane. He is flipping switches, pushing buttons, and communicating with his co-pilot. When air traffic control gives a signal, he pushes a throttle and quickly reaches liftoff. But there's a problem. The plane jostles into a tailspin and then a nosedive. We're going down, the pilot shouts into the headset. The plane crashes. The pilot walks away without a scratch. How is this possible? The pilot was using the flight simulator and what he has learned on what is essentially a video game has and will save countless lives. One of the reasons that simulators work so well has to do with what research says is the impact that video games have on the user. Video games have been shown to increase hand-to-eye coordination. This is because multiple factors such as a running character, point of view, and where a moving target is going need to be taken into account, and the player must coordinate his or her reaction with the game controller. This is why both surgeons and pilots who have experience with video games have a better skill than those who don't play video games. Some studies show that playing video games give you a better ability to focus and filter out distractions. Maybe this is why kids ignore their parents while playing video games. <laughs> We've talked about the consequences. Now here are some surprising side effects. Creativity and increased problem-solving skills have been solidly linked to playing video games. And increased academic rates have been related to playing role-playing and strategic video games. Not only that, kids who start playing sports video games are more likely to start playing an actual sport if they weren't already. 
Now, most people will not believe this. It'll be surprising to learn that since violent video games have become popular, youth violence has declined. Almost 30%. This surprising and confusing research can be contradictory. As a budding gamer, I am on the side of video games being good for you. But I also recognize some of the more, what's the word? Complicating <laughs> variables. New video games are scary because parents don't understand them. My mom can and will play the classic Super Mario Bros for hours on end. But any modern video game will make her dizzy. And I kind of think that parents are just jealous of all the fun their kids are having. <laughs> kids are behind video game consoles conquering new worlds, while parents are behind computers doing work. Aye, aye, aye. <laughs> but you can play video games too much. And video games can be dangerous. But you can do anything too much. Eat, drink, even exercise. And anything can be dangerous. Don't be a Luddite. We need to learn from electronics. We need to embrace electronics so that we can learn from each other. If you're not a Luddite, then you're ahead of the game. And if you're ahead of the game, you're creating a better world. Thank you. Yeah.